apparently a notice went out in error for a zoning board hearing for this evening on our wife an item on our wife cove road if anyone is here for that that actually should be next week for the zoning board if you're here for the planning board you're in the right place the first order of business is a review of the minutes of the previous meeting everyone's had a chance to take a look at that any changes Barbara quite all right I'd be disappointed if you didn't have anything there is I'm sorry page seven this is minor there's a sentence that's sort of half completed towards the two-thirds down from the top third up from the bottom mr. Sherman asked upon the plans they could delineate phase of the landscaping buffer do you have that mm-hmm uh, the last part of it says all plantings located in the 50 foot wide setback delineated in phase one would be installed prior to issuance of a building permit or any alteration. And on page 10, top, top line. Uh, Ms. O'Mara gave an overview of the proposal. Uh, the BA should say district lists standards for multifamily, but doesn't explicitly list multifamily. It has a setback, but it's not. Does anybody else agree saying. with that change? Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Anything else? Will it be approved? Approved as amended? Yes. All in favor? Okay, minutes are approved. Uh, under correspondence, we received this evening a letter from the State of Maine Department of Human Services Bureau of Health regarding a letter to Albert Frick Associates. It's a copy regarding minimum lot size waiver for the in by the sea application. That letter is dated October 19, 2004. That's the extent of the correspondence. Uh, the agenda tonight, just to review, the first item under old business is the in by the sea site plan and public hearing is scheduled for tonight. Under new business, the Dunham private access way permit also a public hearing is for this evening uh, and the U.S. Cellular Tower site plan or site plan completeness and finally under other business uh, a public hearing on the DB district front setback amendment. So first item is the in by the sea site plan uh, request site plan review or an addition uh, to the in by the sea reviewed for conditional use review. And good evening. Good evening. I'm Scott Tees of TFH Architects. Uh, I'm here this evening uh, with Marie McQuaid, uh, managing partner of Invite the Sea. And should there be questions with regards to the site, uh, septic system, uh, Steve Burr Bradstreet, uh, civil engineer, and Al Frick, our soil scientists, are here. So please don't hesitate to ask questions should they arise. Uh, if I can um, essentially very quickly do what I did uh, during the workshop session, which is to quickly review the nine components to the submission, which is uh, in Division 6 of the submittal. Uh, basically, uh, we're looking to do additions to the building as well as some minor site modifications, uh, both in conjunction with it and, and what we feel is just good policy in terms of upgrading the facility. Item one was uh, the addition, which is indicated here in the tan color uh, to the east of the building. Uh, the, the, uh, the program that that addition would contain would be six additional guest rooms, a meeting room of approximately 1,200 square feet. Their the present is 1,300 square feet, so we're actually slightly reducing the area of the meeting space. 
uh, restroom accommodations uh, to serve both the uh, meeting room as well as the restroom, as, you, as well as the restroom. As you're probably aware, the uh, restrooms are uh, presently on the lower level. Now we'll have easily accessible uh, facilities on the ground floor. Uh, administration space, slight kitchen expansion, um, and on the lower level, uh, storage and uh, a fitness uh, center. The uh, item in the center, essentially, renovation of the existing building, number two, is expansion of the lobby. Uh, we are going to upgrade that lobby to some minor modifications in terms of, well, I should say, um, completely uh, renovate the interior of that, and then to extend it toward the water. Again, you can see the tan area as it moves toward the water uh, from the existing uh, deck area. Item three uh, was to create, take the space that was a uh, meeting space and create uh, three additional guest rooms there. Um, then there's actually two more, uh, one upstairs and one in the connecting link. So there's a total of we're proposing 11 new guest rooms. In response to that, we are looking to expand the parking uh, by 13 spaces. And that's indicated here in this light tan color as it moves around uh, to the western portion of the property. The uh, solid waste structure, which presently exists in the parking lot in this area, uh, will be upgraded and landscaped, as I think indicated in the plans. The entrance itself will have receive an upgrade. We're uh, looking to put uh, red cobbles at the entrance um, and some uh, landscaping that will essentially enhance the entrance. We're adding, proposing to add street trees along Bowery Beach Road. That's seven, eight to general upgrade of landscaping as it's been submitted. And there may be uh, a relocation of a pump that is presently located in the Rose Garden, which is in the area of number one or the expansion over here. Uh, the design of the exterior of the building is completely consistent with what we did uh, back in the late 80s, um, using the same materials, the, the shingles, uh, the use of porches, verandas. Uh, they have been submitted to you in a preliminary state Certainly, as um, the project evolves, there'll be probably more of the spirit and all the size of the general geometries. Uh, we don't anticipate any changes there. We are in receipt of Post Engineering's review of the first, I believe it's September 17th, which is a review of our initial submittal. Uh, we have uh, read all those points and we are prepared to address all those with our final submittal for building permits. I think with that, I will open it to questions. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and I'm sure we may have some questions. What I'd like to do now is open the public hearing uh, and uh, would ask that anyone who wishes to speak, please identify yourself, uh, indicate where you live, and we'd be happy to hear from you. So. Open the public hearing on this application and approach the podium. Good evening. Hi, my name is Raymond Neview. We live at 32 Barry Beach. And if I can borrow this uh, site plan for a minute, we live right at the end of the diagram. We are we're separated from the end by 10 feet, which is the common 10 feet that this town has as right of way to get to the cemetery. So all the neighbors um, located here, we're the closest ones, and we're the ones that would be most affected by whatever happens here. So I want to speak to two things, um, the footprint and the noise. The first thing we know for sure is that um, whatever happens will be done very well because Scott Teach is in charge. And we all know Scott, his reputation is international, and this will be a superior design as I understand it, and as he understands it, we'll all be very happy with the result. They're going to take the, the tennis court for parking, but that isn't an issue because there's nobody lives on this side anyways. They're taking the garden, and that's too bad. We really like the garden. 
Hope you put it back in our yard. <laughs> but it hasn't been happening either. My understanding is that when they have this 1,200 square foot of expansion inside, they're going to take some of the activities that were um, taking place in the east side of the lot on those tents and bring those inside. And my expectation is that the southern lawn here will still be used for the usual summer activities of tents. The one issue which has been come up every once in a while is a septic system. We, can speak, we know about that. But over the years, that's been improved gradually, and we expect this won't be a problem. Uh, as I understand, you're going to work on that some more. So this won't, we won't have that thing come up anymore. Um, so now, speaking to the noise very briefly, some people have complained about noise over here, not us. When you have a, a tent on the south lawn, that noise never leaves the area that I can tell. We walk all around it, and, and that's never been an issue. When they have a tent on the east lawn, some people have complained in the past that the noise would get all the way across um, that, that big field over there and reach their home, but, but they worked on it too. What's going to happen is when they when they bring the activities out of the east lawn and into their new facility, that noise, whatever it was, will go away. But there will still be noise, and that's us having parties on the weekend. So blame us for the noise. I hope you'll approve this, uh, this plan. Thank you. <laughs> John? John? Yeah. Could we have the architect put that up on the bulletin board so the audience can see sure. rendering better. Can, can we move it on that take site plan? <clears throat> I tried to do that last week. As you okay. recall, to or you can move the easel around and then so the audience can see it. Yeah, just make sure people can stand at the. Hmm? done this before. My name is Carol Burwell, and I live in Westbrook. I'm a notary public, and in my capacity as such, I perform wedding ceremonies within the state of Maine. It is my opinion that the additions being proposed here tonight would be an asset to the inn and its clientele, of course, while at the same time I see no detriment to the environment or the community at large. The rooms and restrooms that the inn plans to add on would provide a more premium quality of service for its patrons, and that would also include those with disabilities because they're going to provide restrooms on the main floor instead of having to go downstairs, although there is an elevator. Addressing the traffic issue, let's face it, in the summer we have our tourists, and tourists bring a lot of money into the state. They also bring traffic. We are conditioned to summer traffic, I would think, by now. I don't see the inn's proposals changing things all that much as far as traffic goes. As to the environment, I feel the inn has preserved the environment surrounding their prop property beautifully. When was the last time you took a walk around the grounds by the inn by the sea? It is breathtaking. I have done weddings there on occasion, and no matter what time of day or night, the flowers and grass and surroundings always look cared for personally. 
And so I will leave you with that thought in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mike Moles, and as many of you know, I'm on the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, the Inn by the Sea has always been a great community partner here in Cape Elizabeth. They're always there if a local group is trying to raise money for a certain cause. Uh, they've come forward with a very good plan. Uh, you're going to be addressing another item later this evening talking about their request to modify the setback in the BB district. Uh, if we could have approved it on the night that it came before the town council, I think there were enough councillors that would have just stamped it on the spot because they have made such a, a uh, good, responsible request in improving the frontage to the building and the safety of cars moving around their, their circle there. So I just wanted to come and speak on behalf of the inn, uh, that they've come forward with a good plan here. I think Ray has been before this group before and said that most of the noise in the neighborhood is his. So, <laughs> um, so I just want to speak on behalf of the inn and from a town council perspective, speaking for myself, uh, myself and several of other councillors thought that the amendment to change their ability to move closer to the street uh, was okay with us too. So when that comes back to us, I don't see a problem there. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Philip Holt. I live at 66 Scott Dyer Road in Cape Elizabeth. And I'm employed by the Inn by the Sea in, uh, in a capacity that is in transition. But um, I wanted to address uh, my understanding of the advantages to the community of having the Inn by the Sea where it is. Uh, number one, um, because we uh, are a seasonal business, there's a lot more business in the summer than there is in the winter. Um, we also find that there are a number, significant number, of recent high school graduates, college students, and high school students that are seeking summer employment. Uh, I have a 15-year-old who found that he really didn't like uh, picking strawberries. But uh, we managed to find something for him to do at the end, which was uh, useful. Uh, he didn't absorb as much of the uh, work ethic as I would have liked. But the point is that having work opportunities for our young people is a distinct advantage to the community. Um, I want to address the question of um, traffic. Uh, expanding the size of the parking lot by 13 is not particularly significant, but um, as you're aware, uh, there have been uh, occasions uh, on this lawn, this I guess is called the east side lawn, as well as on the south lawn, and when those occasions overlap, there are a lot of cars. And we have found that we had to run a shuttle service or essentially um, um, uh, transport people from where they left their cars in the uh, church parking lot and bring them to the end, and then when the occasion was over, they would be taken back and that in itself generated uh, at least twice as much traffic as one car coming to uh, the inn and uh, sitting in the parking lot and then leaving. <clears throat> so to the extent that uh, the occasions become smaller in size and this east lawn is no longer used for uh, wedding uh, or that sort of reception, then that's going to reduce traffic. And um, so I think the net effect, this is a subjective assessment, I think the net effect is going to be uh, a marginal reduction in traffic 
turning in the main entrance. I don't need to say anything more about the appearance of the inn. I think uh, you're, you're all aware that, that the inn is well cared for, well presented to the public, and its location uh, is memorable to uh, probably a third of the population of Maine. But uh, not a third of the population comes every weekend. Thank you. My name is Tracy Carson. I'm from Saco. I, uh, I'm a disc jockey. I perform at the NBC quite often and I'm solely responsible for the reduction in noise. <laughs> um, a lot of really nice things have been said tonight and um, I just want to give you, give you folks a little perspective um, from, from the clients that the inn has, so, uh, weddings, uh, the brides, the grooms, the extended families. I, I have a different perspective because I get pretty close to them in working with them and I get to hear, I hear them talking a lot you know, at the table and they're talking about the gardens and this, uh, this, I don't know how relevant this is, but this woman two or three weeks ago that I did a wedding on a Saturday was just almost in tears of how beautiful it was for her family to be there all together in this, and she just keyed in on the location, how beautiful the grounds were. And I just thought that was really nice and I just wanted to tell you guys that probably wouldn't get to hear that. If all those people could be here talking tonight, they would have nothing but praise about the staff, the location. And it's, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you. We'll close the public. Oh, yes. Hello, my name is Don Foreman. I'm from South Portland, Maine. I, too, am a disc jockey. I'm here with two of my associates, Eric Kruger of Westbrook and Michael Mahoney of Portland. Did I get that right? Uh, we have done a number of events there. In fact, in my s seven years, I've been doing weddings in Maine. I've done probably two dozen weddings at the Inn by the Sea. I actually came here to address the sound issue, but it doesn't sound like it's an issue. But I would like to just hammer home some points about that uh, from my personal experience. First of all, uh, when the Inn does con have a DJ contracted for an event, they actually don't do the contracting. It's contracted through the client. Uh, but the Inn is very diligent about having us sign a noise ordinance contract. Uh, they won't let us start without it. They won't let us bring our equipment in without it. And I found that they are very concerned about the neighbors. Uh, they actually have a gentleman on staff by the name of uh, Mr. Majors, who is always there checking us, making sure that the sound pressure level never exceeds what would be considered, you know, an above average conversational level, but very low for music. Uh, all the personnel demonstrated a sincere concern for the neighbors, and Susan uh, is always, you know, with her staff, she runs a very tight ship there, and I feel that they're a very responsible, community-oriented business that Cape Elizabeth should be proud of. That's it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Whitney, this is Hillary. We've both been formal workers at the Inn until March 2001 last year. And we both think that the Inn is a great place to provide us work for the summer. And I can, I'm part-time uh, during the summer, which helps me um, raise, save money for college when I want to go. And, and Susan's also helped. We're raising um, money for the Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Program. We started it at the high school this year, and Susan's helped us with that. That's about it. Uh, what were the last names? Sorry. So we can get... Nelson. Like. Thank you. You have anyone else? Okay, thank you for the comments. Um, if we can have the applicant back up and address some questions. Questions from the, the board? Barbara. 
I'll just say I think it's a lovely project and it's going to be a great addition. I believe you were going to go th through the uh, engineer's report, if you could, just address some of the issues there. This is uh, OST Engineering yes. uh, uh, review of uh, September 14th. I think, Steve, if you wouldn't mind, uh, since it is engineering, let's let an engineer respond. That's fine. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Steve Bradstreet with Aquarian Engineering Services. The um, letter from uh, Steve Hunting at Oast Associates uh, touched on um, a, a number of items, but the only one item that, uh, or two items that required additional, uh, let's call it detailing, were for the concrete curb and pavement buildup uh, to be detailed on the plans to reference uh, DOT specifications for uh, the material and for the installation um, of those uh, two, and those will be uh, provided on the plans. And then also the um, lighting specifications, there was also a light-based detail that was provided within the section of the submission, section 14. And um, uh, the design of that in reference to whether it's located on the concrete chamber system will be approved um, and reviewed by Al Frick. Um, it was discussed with him on what we should do there, and um, those recommendations and approvals by, uh, by Al will be uh, incorporated into those details and also provided on the plan as necessary. The um, other, uh, I guess, engineering uh, type comments that were not specifically in uh, Steve Harding's letter uh, would be in uh, Marine's memo of today. Um, one was the sort of engineering, the overflow, nine overflow parking spaces will be shown on the plans. They were, uh, they are grassed uh, parking spaces that were in the original plans and incorporated into the parking study that we provided um, for this project. And the other one is an erosion control plan, which will show the Erosion control protections during construction and the procedures taken by the contractor to make sure those are implemented correctly and removed correctly. Um, I think those were the engineering comments that were uh, mentioned. Thank you. Any other questions? Dad? Um, a motion? Sure. A motion for the board to consider finding of fact number one HMH limited partnership is proposing an expansion of the inn by the sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road which requires review under section 19-9 site plan review and conditional use review under section 19-5-5 Number two, the town engineer has recommended that additional information be added to the plans. Number three, in order to comply with the off-street parking requirements, there must be nine overflow parking spaces available. Number four, the code enforcement officer is relying on the State Department of Health Engineering to review the adequacy of the septic system. Number five, the planning board conducted a detailed review focusing on hosting outside events at the Inn by the Sea in a manner that complies with the site plan standards, particularly noise standards, which needs to be incorporated into this approval. Number six, the application sub substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-5 D, conditional use standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of HMH limited partnership for site plan review and conditional use review of an expansion of the Inn by the Sea located at 40 Bowery Beach Road, U17-14-39 be approved subject to the following conditions. 
that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated 9-14-04. Number two, that the overflow parking spaces be shown on the plans. Number three, that an erosion control plan be submitted. And number four, that the evidence of an issuance of approval of the septic system by the State Department of Health and Engineering be submitted. Number five, the prior planning board approve, approval regulating outside events remain in effect, except that the total number of guests be reduced to 172 attendees. And number six, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans and materials have been revised to reflect the <coughs> conditions. Moved and seconded. Um, I would propose a slight amendment uh, on paragraph five in the findings of fact. I think we should just add the word prior to detailed review. Planning board conducted a prior detailed review. Just to make it clear that that review and those issues were addressed and decided under a prior application, not this one. So that's acceptable. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? None opposed? It's approved. Thank you. Thank you. We can move on to the uh, second item. Second item on our agenda tonight is the request by Tom Dunham for a private access way permit to make a lot located at 11 Becky's Cove Lane and buildable, and we will review that for compliance with. Section 1979, Private Access Ways. Uh, this also is scheduled for a public hearing. Good evening. Good evening. Only one left. <laughs> All right, they're in the process of that. They're yes. in the process. Okay. Are you ready? Well, We're ready. A little nervous. I'm Sandy Dunham. And I'm uh, here to uh, request a private access way permit to make our lot at 11 Becky's Cove Lane buildable. This is a lot that we acquired a few years ago with the express purpose of building a house on it. And one of the um, things that we would like to request is that approval of the 12 foot wide roadway uh, leading to the property. And this is the same roadway that we are currently using and have been using for the last 25 years with access to the cottage that's adjacent to the lot where we want to build our house. And this road has been in existence for over 100 years. And during the 25 years uh, that we've owned the driveway, uh, it's seen a lot of heavy traffic and has held up just fine. Uh, about 16 years ago, we had to build a retaining wall to keep the cottage from falling into the ocean. And uh, to do that construction, we had to bring down a large crane, uh, which had no problem getting down the road and back out. Also, dump trucks uh, brought very large, heavy granite blocks and got uh, in and out of the road uh, without any problem. It's 
has held up uh, just fine. Most recently, when the Partridges uh, built their house next door to us, uh, they used the road uh, to build their house, and the dump trucks and building material people had no problem uh, negotiating the driveway and getting in and out. Uh, one of the reasons why we would like to uh, keep the road the way it is is because um, we already have a lot of people who come down um, for curiosity purposes uh, to our house uh, to look around, and if the road is uh, wider, that will invite more people to come down um, the private private road. And since we're down there by ourselves, it's a little uh, intimidating when people come down just to look around. Uh, the other uh, reason, one of the other reasons is to keep the integrity uh, of the road. Um, to enlarge it to a 14-foot roadbed would probably mean taking out a minimum of about 10 very large um, trees on one side of the driveway uh, to do that. Currently the road is uh, 14 feet or more at the entrance uh, where it enters Shore Road and, and then it narrows down um, to approximately uh, 12 feet for most of the length of the, of the road with the exception of uh, one uh, area where there's a utility pole a, across from a tree. And the distance between the utility pole and the tree is 13 and a half feet. Um, there's enough room for a 12 foot uh, wide roadbed with one foot grass um, shoulders on each side and giving plenty of room for snow to be pushed out uh, between the trees. And there are no other houses that are adjacent to this driveway. so. Um, Snow removal is, is not really a problem. Uh, the road's been used for more than 25 years, and we've had, in that time, uh, no erosion problems, uh, no problems getting uh, heavy equipment, uh, such as oil tanks, oil trucks and stuff, uh, in and out, uh, in all kinds of weather. And when Chief McGoldrick came down and looked at the road, um, he had a few comments, and some of them are noted on the plan, that there were two, a couple of pine trees that he would like to have limbed up or cut down. And uh, actually our neighbors, the McGinn's, have removed those two pine trees, uh, so they're no longer um, an issue. Uh, the other thing he asked for was the hammerhead turnaround, uh, so when the trucks come down the roadway, if they had to come down, they'd be able to turn around and go back out, and we have put that on the plan. Um, to uh, do that, um, um, we have uh, uh, talked with them again about getting a very small easement over here to have a space for them to turn around, uh, or the couple of feet for the turn. Um, and the road, uh, the driveway was widened at the entrance to Shore Road when the Partridges built their house to allow for um, fire trucks to be able to make it, the turn into the driveway. And at that time, that was um, adequate for the fire chief. Uh, the road will only be used by our family, uh, and we have no other neighbors objecting to keeping the driveway um, as it is now. In fact, some of the neighbors we talked to uh, had some real problems with possibly widening the road and losing the character of the driveway and uh, that area along Shore Road. Um, and uh, another um, issue that <clears throat> has come up is paving the end of the driveway. And in talking to the person who plows the driveway, says that paving just the 10 feet, um, one would invite more people to come down, uh, thinking maybe it's not a private driveway, and also that the plow gets caught on the edge um, <clears throat> where it meets the dirt, and then it catches, and then it gets chipped, and it seems to cause more problems um, than not having it there at all. There are uh, about seven gravel driveways that enter onto Shore Road. And in my observation this week in driving down Shore Road, I didn't see any dirt or gravel <coughs> on Shore Road at the end of these driveways, and nor have I noticed that at the end of our driveway. Um, the <coughs> concerns um, of the planning board that when the letter dated 10-19-04, um, <coughs> we have been um, addressing some of those issues. One is the request to 
um, expand the right of way from 12 feet to 30 feet. And we have a verbal agreement from our neighbors, uh, Frank and Nancy Strout, to give us a right of way that matches what's already available to um, others um, adjacent to us, which will allow for snow plowing. And the right of way, as it's shown on your plan, um, varies between 25 feet and 33 feet um, as it goes down the driveway. Uh, we have a verbal agreement from <coughs> Neil and Suzanne McGinn for 250 square foot access easement for emergency vehicles. Um, <clears throat> the town engineer um, had requested um, more, the following things which we can put on our plan. More details of the hammerhead churn, uh, which was requested by the fire chief and shows on the plans. Uh, culvert information and pipe inverts for the catch basins as shown on the plans. Um, and standards for proper erosion control would be adhered to during the building process. Uh, the building envelope, um, as Maureen pointed out to me the other day, is shown on the site development plans will be revised to exclude any encroachment into the 75-foot shoreland zoning setback and 30 feet from any uncontested property lines, and it won't encroach on the private access right-of-way. And on the plan, uh, there's shown a conveyance of land from lot one um, to uh, the lot at uh, 11 Becky's Cove Lane uh, on the plan, reflects an internal agreement between the two properties to clean up overlap of the deeds, and it doesn't change the size of lot one at all. And we, along with uh, Frank and Nancy Strout, have agreed to sign a maintenance agreement to maintain the driveway. And finally, um, the ordinance allows the planning board to approve the development of an individual lot lacking the required street frontage. If ad adequate access is provided to the lot, the development is carried out in a manner that minimizes impact on adjacent properties and is consistent with sound neighborhood development. And to maintain uh, the integrity of the neighborhood and our neighbor's property, we're asking that um, you do approve our permit and that you allow for um, not paving the 10 feet um, on, on Shore Road to uh, Becky's Cove Lane and that the travel way be a minimum width of 12 feet. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, well, well, we'll get to that. Let me just remind the board first. We have to uh, review this for completeness. And as you know, if... Uh, it's deemed incomplete. We need to identify the information we would like to be submitted, and uh, we then would have no further substantive discussion on the application. So completeness is the first issue. Um, there were a couple of things listed, including the access easement to be acquired on the uh, for use of emergency vehicles. Has that been submitted yet, Maureen, or that hasn't? Okay. Um, but that, this is, do you, do you, the easement for the emergency access, 250 is it square feet? Yes. That yes. you would need, and yes. that's, you have a verbal agreement, yes. but you don't have anything yet in writing, or is that it? No, no. Okay. No, mainly because when I talked to Maureen the other day, she said, you know, come to the meeting and um, see what all needs to be done and then get it done. Um, all right. Well, anyway, completeness is the first issue that we need to discuss and decide, and then we can move on to the application if we deem it complete. So any questions on the completeness issue of the applicant or discussion? The other issue that is the culvert information. Did I miss something? Right. Um, at the driveway crossing, the town, have you seen that uh, request? Okay, I, I, this is my, my engineer here. <laughs> he can address that issue. I don't know anything about that. Uh, my name is Dwight Anderson. I'm with DeLuca Hoffman Associates. Uh, I did see that comment in there. We have shown for a 12-inch uh, culvert across that hammerhead 
what we don't have, we're just lacking invert, which is just elevation essentially that we, we can put on the plans. Uh, just a detail that was missed there. We also had shown the culverts that exist out the existing drive. There's uh, three six inch culverts that show up there now. So we'd be certainly happy to add that onto the plan when we make the uh, other minor adjustments. Okay. Where, would, where would that be? Uh, it actually shows up uh, right here. It's this proposed 12 inch storm drain All right. with an inlet right. here and right an outlet. Lot line. At the lot line? Uh, it actually runs, yeah, it starts on the Dunham's property, probably about 10 feet from the stroke parcel, and then it runs across that hammerhead. Hmm. Yeah, the only concern I had was that um, there were some comments by the engineer about surface drainage, but I think I would take the applicant's presentation tonight that they've had many years of driving down that driveway without any problems in the right. past. Yeah. In, 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 so I don't think it, uh, I think the drainage situation I think is adequate in my opinion. Any other questions? Again, limited to the issue of completeness in the application. Okay, I have a motion. Yes. <clears throat> motion for the board to consider. Motion for completeness be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Tom Dunham for a private access way permit for a lot located at 11 Becky's Cove Road, R2-4S-1 be deemed complete. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Um, what I'd like to do now, I'll open the public hearing. If there's anyone that has comments, and then we can get back to the application. Uh, open the public hearing. If anyone would like to speak, please identify yourself, <coughs> indicate where you live, and we'd be happy to listen. Good evening, my name is Frank Stroud, I live at 1184 Shore Road, and I own this portion of the road, and uh, I'm in full support of what the Dunhams are proposing here. Um, and I do want to make a couple comments about the paving of the end of that, this driveway. I'm the one that plows it, and I also am the one that plows Zeb's Cove Road at, at the end of that. And that was paved several years ago, and it didn't take long before that was chipped and broken away, and you had pieces of uh, pavement that ended up in Old Ocean House Road. I think the same thing is going to happen here, especially the way we plow that road and try to keep the snow clear. Uh, I'm also in favor of that 12-foot uh, uh, wide gravel driveway. Again, I plow it. I can keep it 14 feet easily, which I do, because it is, as the way that driveway is, I need to bank the snow to keep it nice and clear um, because of the way the, the wind blows up in there. So um, I'm in support of what they're proposing here, but I, I have real concerns about paving the end of the, uh, the road. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, close the public hearing. And questions on the application? I, uh, the first one I had is the easement issue, I mean, and, and I'm not, I don't want to hold up the plan, but I think we certainly need uh, the, the proposed um, a motion for approval talks about uh, an easement from the McGinn parcel being granted. Being uh, what? Being granted. Now that's something uh, that needs to be set up in writing at some point. Right. Um, and. Right. It, if we were to approve this, I assume that getting that in before the issuance of, issuance of a building permit won't be a problem? No. And then, Maureen, do we need to have anyone on the behalf of the town approve the format of that, or is that really between the parties to hammer it out? Um, it depends. If it's an easement that we accept, I always send it to the attorney. Um, in this case, I might read it myself and just make sure there's rights granted for emergency access. But again, it, we're, 
we're trying to make sure that we have emergency access rights, so I might just send it to our attorney, to, but it would be something that we would want to have. <coughs> we want to be able to review to make sure it said sure. what it's supposed to say. Then we can, we can okay. We, we have talked to uh, Chris Knight at Tickham Associates about the wording of that and surveying it out and all that sort of stuff, and I have talked to uh, the McGinn's, and they're perfectly in agreement uh, to do that, so I don't see that that's a problem. Okay. Mm. Uh, Barbara, go ahead. I guess I don't understand. Um, why is there a conveyance of land from lot one, which is a non-conforming lot? I, I couldn't okay. find anything that explained that to me. I'll let the white explain that. Actually, uh, what that is that you're talking about, the parcels of uh, parcel one here and parcel two, uh, there's actually an overlap in the deeds that describe those two parcels. So what they're doing there is they're just they're clarifying that the deeds for that overlap area, trying to clean that up, um, and that affects the wedges shown here and here. So essentially, what they're going to do is define that this wedge where there's an overlap goes with um, this parcel, whereas the other one goes with the other parcel. There's not an actual um, gain or loss of property. It just cleans up the actual description. But it looks like both of them are being conveyed from one to two. Is that the way you understand it? No, I, Maureen, there was some question about changing the non-conforming lot and that being a problem, even though the deeds are not clear. I, I believe what the applicant needs to do is, is to clean up the note. It, it, that you're correct. To that because yeah. the last paragraph of the note says 710 square feet of hatched area to be conveyed from parcel one to parcel two. And I think what they mean is that 710 feet of that lower wedge goes to parcel two and 710 feet of the upper wedge oh. goes to parcel one. That's mm -hmm. I, that's exactly right. So, so, so actually, you're exchanging land. You're not giving it all to two. Actually, clearly that no, actually so our intent was to convey it, clean it up to go towards one, from one to two. And just on both hatched areas? Right, right. That is, so the note, the way it's written is correct. I misspoke there. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's what creates that's, the problem. They yeah. actually have to do it the other way. Because it's exactly. change it to an illegal right. non So you'd actually have to exchange one for the right. other that's, that's only because it changes. What going to do. Yeah, let me just pull. <laughs> and I don't understand. I'm not sure I understand. Because you're saying that creates one becomes non conforming now. One well, but it's, it's already too small. You can't take away from it. You're, you're now creating a non conforming no, but lot. But if you swap. It's it's yeah, a lot line, it's a lot line adjustment and you're not is that the, is that the theory? Actually, what we were looking to do is we had a 30 foot building setback that we needed to maintain and uh, it was more important up towards the existing dwelling. So okay. Essentially, by by doing that, we could clean up the wording for that. It looks like it'll get our intent if we just clean it up so that the top parcel goes with parcel. Two and the bottom piece goes with one. And that would that achieve. What I thought we were going that to would do. achieve what we're trying to do. So we can. Now, now I'm stuff. still confused. Where is the setback an issue? The setback. It actually shows up on your sheet, uh, your site layout and grading plan. Oh, okay. Maybe that's easier to look at. Yeah, it's blown up. Yeah. It appears to be correct on that one. Yeah. That one actually shows what the intent. Was. And what you can see is that on the top hatched area in the other sheet, we've drawn the 30-foot building setback okay. from that line. And then down below, it's actually it's still drawn from that line, but the intent was to have it drawn from that front line closest to where the house is going. So, so it's actually the upper one that you give to... Right, yeah. Parcel one and the lower one that you give to parcel. I mean, parcel two and the lower one you give to parcel one. Correct. Okay, maybe Maureen can address this. 
Do we have one here, or could you show me where the current existing lot line for parcel one is? Sorry, say again. Current lot line for parcel one. Is that on here, or could you show it to us somehow? Yeah. But it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that was the one. I, I believe. I think we actually have a copy of the old the original survey. Is that on our sheets? <laughs> You made a comment that there was an overlap in the descriptions. Right. Okay. So the, just there, is, to, there is an overlap. There is, there is a claim by both parties to the same sort of piece of dirt out here, and we're trying to That's right. resolve the dispute by moving to agree to, as to where these are supposed to go. Right. We just what See, we want to use that to as our advantage on the top part. When you say the top part, you mean the north part, That's of the, correct. which is the closest to the drawing of the house. That's right. Which gives you a little more setback. That's all we're looking So that for. should land in lot in parcel two, correct? That hatched area should land in parcel two. And the lower one would go to parcel one. Right. Okay, and that's not what the note says. Right, it's not what the note says, and okay. if it bothers you, we'll, we're certainly happy to correct that, but we do need that top piece to go with parcel two. Understood, and you're getting to a point where I think you want to be, which is you can't be, cre you can't be taking away both lands from right. parcel one because you're going to have a problem if you right. do that. And what we, we'll so, but if you're it. netting it out even, you're just in to resolve a lot line dispute, no problem. Okay. I need to check that with Tickham. They had actually done the, okay. looked at where the line's going. I don't have the yeah. original survey there, but if it's, if it's, uh, the note is incorrect, we'll certainly clarify that the top piece of that goes to parcel two and the bottom will stay with parcel one, unless it was the original, according to where the original boundary was. I think that's the, actually what I thought yeah, we were going to do. But swap. Swap. Yep. That was my understanding when sure. we talked about it. The, the other thing to keep in mind is you already have a building on parcel one, right. which I assume is non-conforming as to setbacks. You might want to think about making a swap that doesn't make that any less non-conforming than it is now? I mean, because you're saying that they're actually taking from one to give to two at the top, which makes it more non-conforming. Right. But right. You, you can't do that. You understand? Uh, yeah, I understand what you're... I'm not happy to have to tell you that, but at the same time... But, and I think the... Um, the uh, you know, the, the deed overlap is where... What gets me there, not having a, a copy of that original survey here. Um, if we have to, it just affects the building envelope at this point. I don't think we're here certainly to review exactly, you know, where the building, we had shown it on that plan, but that's more detail than you require for the purpose of this review. Uh, that's a good point. I mean, maybe we don't even need to address right. Maybe leaving all that off. Does that, is that, the only thing we can't approve is we can't approve a plan that shows some sort of adjustment like that that, that creates a zoning violation. Is that accurate? I actually asked the building inspector that, and he didn't say that you couldn't approve it, mm. but that um, he would not issue any kind of a building permit or anything else for something involved in that. Sure. So we can approve if, if it. you approve it, it's just going to come back to you. Other, right. This line here. As long as, as, long as the applicants want to do anything with their land. Meaning on the new lot. This one? Because so when they go to pull the building permit, permit for the new lot, they'll say you've created a non conformance. You've got to go back and put it back the way it was. If they want to renovate the existing house. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right. <laughs> okay. Oh, one more well, time. Okay. I'm not sure we've. No, no, he let, has let another me. point. Okay, go ahead. Apparently. <laughs> uh, Bo had, had uh, looked at this as well. The property line, the dark line, Correct. shown closest to the building that's on parcel one, right. is what's in the deed for parcel two. That, that was the point that I didn't have before that Bo was working. Oh, so it, it owns it already. Right. So what they're doing is they're clearing up and saying, yes, that is... That is what we're agreeing to, I even see. though there's overlap from the two parcels. So, so, so it's also in the deed parcel one. It's in right. both deeds? Well, that's part of what they're resolving, John. It's, there's, a, just, there's an overlap. Right. No, I understand. What You're simply subtracting it. Right. it. You know, I don't know how... That doesn't create a zoning problem because it's already in the deed for parcel one. It's not conveyed. Correct. So to speak. It's just taken out of one deed. Correct. Right, because this is, this is the lot, right, the lot one. 
This is the slot line, right? The yeah, dark across line. The, for, for two. For the, for oh. So how does that create a setback? It doesn't. I don't. It's just something they wanted to clear up because it, you know. Right. You can't make the non-conformance worse, and since there isn't, it's not quite clear the depth of the non-conformance. You're not making it worse. You're sim because law parcel one has a claim to that land, but you're clarifying it. Right. And it's with 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 this agreed boundary. Right. Well, I'm satisfied if if. It's already in the deed in parcel one. Right. That's a different story than right. if you're conveying from two to one and then creating more of a non-conforming use. That's what the note says. It's in both, I thought. And they're just taking it out of, of parcel two, right? It's, it's actually, out. well, it's clarifying to... It's in parcel two's it, deed, It's though. in parcel two deed that this is the line. And I understand. <laughs> But it's in ones as well, deed. It's in both deeds. Well, I think ones would have it being further towards two. That would be where the discrepancy is. I don't think that's. I don't think that's. Good. I don't think that's the case because this is the line. That's the. I, I don't think so. Well, this, Look, here's here's where I, here's where I think there's a concern. <laughs> what we have in front of us right now, just to return to the basics, yeah. is 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 a plan that says you're taking land out of parcel one and giving it to parcel two. As it stands, I can't, this board in my view can't approve that. So you have to come up with some way uh, to at least ref make the note reflect that we're not making an existing nonconformance worse in order to, to comply with the uh, right. and, statute. And I don't know if you heard our conversation before while you were talking amongst yourself. If what the code enforcement officer said is, if we approve it that way, we can approve it that way, but he won't issue any building permits for Maybe. anything if you wanted to renovate or because it's not conforming. And it would seem a waste of time for us to go through all this, give that approval, and then you can't do anything and have to come back. So uh, it would be better to get it right. Uh, I would think. Time. And again, when, I don't think we're trying to hold you up for the sake of holding it up. But <laughs> Just one moment, if I can just take a minute. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What it does. It pushes into that building that you've been fighting for. Yeah. Essentially, that amount. So it push that back a little. Four or five feet. So the language can be changed then. Well, I was going to say. That was just what I wanted to clarify. You know, the deed. So I guess if we check the language. 